My name is Aaron Stubblitz from the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, and uh, we submitted comments uh, online already um, asking the Commission to reject this docket or otherwise set it aside for further review for a couple specific reasons. Um, first, uh, I'd like to point out the timeline that this docket, uh, the way in which it was submitted and reviewed and is now up for approval. It appears that, that it was submitted on September 2nd. Uh, notice of the application was sent out on October 1st. Uh, and notice of this meeting was provided on uh, October 26th. Uh, this provided the, the public with 16 days from the time of the notice of public hearing until the close of comment period. And it's just not enough time to have informed, substantive, uh, to uh, uh, generate informed, substantive comments on this sort of technical, uh, very substantive project. Uh, you know, you need, you need to secure experts, get expert reports, draft comments, submit that all, 16 days, not enough time. Um, additionally, we specifically only had 12 days from the time that we gained access to the documents uh, till the close of public comments, and just, again, not enough time. But more importantly, uh, in the time that we did have, we noticed that there was one real big red flag issue with this product, uh, at least from our perspective, and that it, there's a serious undercounting of wetlands impacts. And let you give me give you an idea. There's 410 acres of disturbed area for this project, and 0 0.052 acres of permanent conversion of forested wetlands to emergent wetlands. We thought immediately red flags went up for us, thinking that can't possibly be right. So we spot checked two of the wetlands of the 66 wetlands crossed, and we overlaid the National uh, Wetlands Inventory Mapping Supplements. Uh, with the longitudinal and latitudinal locations of the wetlands and notice, as you can see here, these wetlands that were classified in the, in the docket as emergent wetlands are covered with trees. <laughs> so the, the two wetlands alone, wetlands B19 and wetlands seven, uh, C49, the only two wetlands that we looked at, both listed as being strictly emergent wetlands, actually are, are far, heavily forested wetlands. And just looking at the potential project impact to those two wetlands, it represents a 650% increase over what is represented in the docket. Furthermore, with regard to this issue, there, there appeared no wetlands delineation mapping supplements in the application materials and no alignment sheets for, for the DRBC to even look at to determine whether or not Sunoco's descriptions of potential impacts are accurate, which we propose they are not. Um, furthermore, as you can see from these two maps, uh, it's likely that these wetlands are all forested, but they were also field verified by DRN staff, and there's photographic evidence of that. Um, it's in our comments, and I'm going to produce that here for you today. So thank you for your time. Thank you. The owner whose property is along the Sunoco Logistics Pipeline described in Docket 18. I'm here to represent many other residents and landowners who are concerned about the environmental impact of this pipeline. Most of the pipeline will be installed by open trenching, disturbing soil vegetation in over 170 streams and 66 wetlands. According to Nels Johnson from the Nature Conservancy, the clear cutting of forest affects the ecosystem for 300 feet, that is 100 yards on each side of the pipeline. For every mile of pipeline trench, 72 acres of land are impacted. The horizontal direct Directional drilling method of installation will be used in some areas, including my neighborhood. It is not being used to protect the environment, but to, because our neighborhood is so densely populated that the pipes will be very close to our homes. There is not enough physical space to trench. This method is not without disruption to the environment. I understand that you are responsible for our water quality protection and urge you to take the time to seriously review the impacts of both drilling and trenching, including altered groundwater flow, well water and aquifer impact, and unavoidable disruption to exceptional value streams and wetlands. The drilling will be done from depths between 16 and 60 feet. I have not been able to get a clear answer from Sunoco as to the exact depth of the drilling, which is something important for us to know. One of the 170 streams is just six houses up from my home. It's a tributary of the beautiful West Valley Creek. For a long time, the Mariner exists, uh, existing Mariner 1 pipeline was exposed in the creek. Yes, exposed. It was repaired this summer, and there was obvious disturbance to the creek and the soil in the area. 
Due to time constraints, I cannot even begin to address our health and safety concerns with the highly volatile liquids under high pressure going through these pipelines. We still don't know if the pipeline, if this problem was uh, mitigated properly and wonder who, if anyone, is monitoring and inspecting such disturbances along these pipelines. And what about the ongoing impacts from pipeline leaks, repairs, and abandonment once we wake up to the dangers to our health and environment from fracking and don't need the pipes? I'm requesting that you carefully scrutinize the docket before you and, and postpone the decision. There must be a saturation point and limit to the amount of infrastructure we're going to allow in our environment. I'm asking you to hold a public hearing in Chester County to allow our citizens to have a voice. 